Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a painful event that I would never wish on anyone, not my worst enemy or yours. Removing and replacing your substrate is a pain in the you know what. And you should never really have a good reason to have to do this. But in the unfortunate event that you do have to do it, I'm going to show you how I did it while also telling you why you should make sure that there are no other options before deciding to do this. You ready? Let's go. Hey guys, welcome to Caveman Aquatics. I'm Kev from CavemanAquatics.com. Here I like to make a bunch of helpful videos on all topics of the aquarium hobby that get straight to the point so you can get back to enjoying your beautiful fish. So I won't show you guys an entire video of me just scooping out sand and dumping in new sand. That'll get boring quickly. Instead, I wanted to share with you guys why I had to do it while also showing you the process. But first, let's get this thing started. The first thing you want to do is take out about 50% of your tank water. It just makes it easier to scoop out the sand without getting your entire arm wet up to your elbows, or in my case, your shoulders. But don't take too much out. As you scoop up your substrate, you're going to take water out with it. While your tank is draining, you're going to want to remove all of your decor in the tank. Luckily for me, I only have these two big pieces, and yeah, they are kind of heavy, especially when they're full of water. Now the fun part begins. Grab a scooper or a big cup and start scooping up that substrate. Use your hand to push all the substrate to one side or into a corner and pile it up. Then use your scooper to scoop it all away. Now this process is going to take a while, obviously. So while I do that, let me tell you guys why I'm doing this in the first place. I got this new 210 gallon tank a little over a month ago and I was so excited to have it and to show you guys I wanted to get it set up right away. The plan was to transfer almost everything from my 75 over into the 210 including the filters, the heaters, the wave makers, everything except for the substrate. I wanted a new look for the new tank and I wanted it to be straight aragonite so I could keep my pH nice and high and stable. Well instead of ordering new substrate online like I normally do from a trusted and known manufacturer and being patient, I went ahead and just bought whatever my local fish store had, some no name brand. I figured it's aragonite, it's sand, it's gonna get the job done. Well as I'm sure you know from this video that you're watching, it didn't work out. The sand did raise the pH to about 8.0, right where my guys like it, but the problem was the sand itself. It was all over the place. I did wash the sand before installing it, but I do admit I could have done a little bit of a better job. Or my son could have done a better job. Yeah, he heard that. This tank took forever to clear up, and I mean forever. I mean like it took till last week, which is about a whole month for it to start clearing up. And even then, as soon as one fish kicked up some of that sand, it would float up into the water column, the wave maker would grab it and then push it out to the whole rest of the tank, sand everywhere. But of course at first I just thought or I wanted to believe that it was just dirt or dust left over from the subpar cleaning of the substrate. So I let it rock for about a whole month. Meanwhile I was trying everything to clean it up. Water changes every two to three days, I had polyfill inside my canisters, heck I even added an additional canister. I had three FX6's on here, one of them had no bio media, only mechanical media in it for straight polishing and I had my 407 on there as well for straight polishing. That's four canisters. This water should have been bling bling. And yet every morning I wake up and I see those particles. I come home from work and I see those particles in the water and I try to convince myself it's not the substrate. It can't be the substrate. It has to be something else. But guess what? It was the substrate. So what was the problem? I'll tell you the problem. But first, if you're enjoying the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps me and the video out a ton and it's your easiest way to support the channel. I thank you in advance. The problem was the grain size of the sand. They were too small and too light for my fish and for my setup. I say my fish because these African cichlids love to sift and dig through the sand. They'll gobble it all up in their mouth, swim up to the top and then spit it out. And instead of the sand just falling back down to the bottom, it would linger and float in the water column. And I say my tank setup because I keep wave makers on 24 seven. Wave makers have multiple benefits and if you don't know any of them, watch this video right here. So when the sand gets kicked up or spit out, the return flow of the wave maker catches that sand and then the wave maker blows it right out to the rest of the tank. No bueno. So after some hard and long deliberations with myself, I finally decided it was time to get that sand out of there. Which is why my advice is that if you feel you need to change your substrate, consider all the other options before you decide to do it. Not only because it sucks to do it, but keep in mind in a well established tank, your substrate is home to tons of beneficial bacteria and removing your substrate could cause your tank to crash which can lead to sick or dead fish. In my case though, the substrate wasn't in there that long, so it wasn't gonna hurt the cycle at all to remove it. 
One thing I will say though, I regret not removing the fish during this process. Yes, they were okay the whole time and the cloudy water isn't gonna hurt them, but I felt they were a little too overly stressed. The water was so cloudy that I couldn't see them and they couldn't see me. So every time I stuck my hand in the water or the scooper itself, it would scare them and I felt that they were just too stressed. In hindsight, yeah, it may have been a bit more work setting up the tow, catching all the fish, removing them, but I do believe that they would have been better off. So I do suggest that you remove your fish if you're going to do something like this at this scale. So this is what 120 pounds of substrate looks like when you're about to toss it in the garbage. After finally getting all 120 pounds of it out, or I should say most of it out, it's time to add in the new substrate. I went with Carib Sea Oragali Fiji Pink Sand, which I've used before and I know that it's great stuff. I'll have links to it in the description below. Keep in mind that this sand is made for reef tanks because it's loaded with minerals and has great buffering power to raise your tank's pH, GH, and KH levels, which is perfect for an African cichlid tank that should have hard brackish water as well. I didn't need to buy the Aragali version, which comes with live bacteria to help get your tank cycled almost instantly. The regular version without the added bacteria would have been fine, but the Aragali was available right away and the shipping was fast and you already know I'm impatient. So a few extra bucks for the Aragali wasn't gonna hurt. So one other benefit of the Aragali version is that you don't have to wash the substrate. Not only do you not have to wash it, you shouldn't wash it. Because if you wash it with tap water, you're gonna kill all the live bacteria that's in the substrate, defeating the purpose. So not having to wash it is a definite benefit, especially when you're dealing with 120 pounds of it. I added the substrate directly to the tank, spread it out evenly by feel, because as you can see, you can't even see anything, not even the fish. Then I began to fill in up the tank with new fresh water, making sure to add prime or safe prior to adding tap water. Even after putting the decor back in the water, it's so dark and cloudy you can't even see it in the tank. I kept the lights off because my guys had to be stressed out to the max from all this disrupting I was doing to their home. Turned it on here just for a few minutes just to show you guys how cloudy this water is. Now when the tank finished filling, I clocked it at about an hour, I already saw an improvement in the water. It was already clearing up and even that night before bed, it was even more clear. And here's what it looked like the next day when I got home from work. Beautiful, not a speck of sand in sight. So in the end, this annoying process for everyone involved, you, me, and the fish, it was well worth it. Hope you guys enjoyed that, but I also hope you never have to do it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.